welcome back to the Millionaire Landscape Podcast. Now today we have on a returning guest. His name is Weston Zimmerman. He's a co-founder of Synced Up Software. Uh, Synced, Up, Synced Up Software is a, a landscape management software that is going to help you improve your estimating skills, job costing, and just management of your crews and teams overall. Now today we are going to be diving into more specifically the estimating side of things. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because we see many people ask inside our, our landscape business owners, Facebook group, you know, what should I be charging for this? How much should I charge for that? And it's a very difficult question for people to answer because we don't know all the details to your, to your business. And I understand, you know, when you're first starting off, it's difficult to understand. You don't really know all your numbers uh, and you kind of just want to get a ballpark to see if you're in the right area. And I understand that. But today we're going to dive into with Weston um, what numbers go into estimating, what you need to be looking for, what you need to be calculating out to create those profitable estimates that everybody wants. So he said, if you're a landscaper, want to do this skills, you're not going to want to miss this episode. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to hear some words from our sponsors. The only app every landscaper needs, Company Cam makes it dead simple to communicate, document, and problem solve with guys in the field, no matter where you are. Company Cam brings documentation, communication, and liability protection together in one simple, easy to use app for you and your entire team. Take unlimited photos and videos, share custom reports, create flawless before and afters, and even communicate and share progress with homeowners with galleries and project timelines, all from your smartphone. Company Cam, the only app every landscaper needs. Check it out at companycam.com slash million or in your app store. We want to take a quick second to tell you about our friends over at Cycle CPA. I can't even express to you how important it is to have a good accountant on your side. You know you want accurate bookkeeping and financial statements every month. Instead, you're often left with limited time to focus on the accounting side of your business and no reports to show for it. At Cycle CPA, the landscaping accountants, they not only handle the bookkeeping, but also provide landscape industry benchmarking, job costing, financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA has a team of landscaping accountants available to provide anything from bookkeeping to CFO services. Visit CycleCPA.com and for $100 off, mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast. If you want to get the lead you want and turn your current clients into raving fans, then you need to try Send Gym. They've created an exclusive offer just for our listeners. If you sign up today, you can get your first month for just $2. So if you haven't already, go to sendjim.io forward slash MDL, where you can get even more exclusive deals just for Million Dollar Landscaper podcast listeners. That's sendjim.io forward slash MDL and take advantage of these awesome deals today. This podcast is brought to you by Busy Busy. Busy Busy is so simple to use and it's the most reliable GPS time tracking app on the market. And the best part is it was built for landscapers. Busy Busy's founder created Busy Busy because he owns multiple construction companies and needed to understand better which projects were making him money and which projects were killing him. Payroll is the highest variable cost in the project, so you better be tracking it. Busy Busy does this better than anyone else. So download Busy Busy today and don't forget to mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast to get three free months. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. I'm excited to have on our special guest today. He's actually a returning guest. It's Weston Zimmerman of Synced Up. Now, you guys probably have seen him. He's been all over the internet uh, talking about this awesome software called Synced Up to help you basically manage your landscape business. Good morning, Weston. How are you doing? Hey, good morning, Scott. It's good to see you again. Yeah, appreciate you being on here again. And uh, it's, it's always great to hear from you. Um, you've been up to a lot of things here lately. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm so excited today. We're going to be talking about estimating and the reason why you want to estimate to, to make a profit, obviously, and all the kind of details that kind of goes into it. And um, so you mind sharing a little bit, you know, what Synced Up does and what, you know, a little bit of background about yourself for those that are not familiar with you? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, my background is I more or less grew up working for a company here in central Pennsylvania called Tessie Landscaping. I uh, worked there for about 15 years. And um, <clears throat> at that company, uh, when I started there, it was, a you know, your standard, what I what I call standard, you know, landscape, hardscape, outdoor living company was doing 
a little less than a million in sales, uh, struggling with all the things that our businesses struggle with in this industry, with knowing our numbers, being efficient, training people. And uh, over those 10, 15 years since then, we traveled to a lot of events trying to get a handle on how to be profitable. And we uh, took in some teachings from like, you know, Charles Vanderkoy, budgeting and all of that. Uh, we used some software, some other software, not synced up uh, you know, along our journey. And um, it was it was in that journey where we were just struggling to find a way to just easily job cost our jobs using a system other than just manual spreadsheets that kind of lit the idea of building something, which today it's reality and it's synced up. But uh, it was basically, you know, necessity drives innovation. It was a necessity. It was a need that we had that really no one on the market was filling and uh, always looking for new things to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to start and grow and, and grow up from nothing. So we uh, started Synced Up, and that's what we're doing today. Is basically, it's a project management software with an emphasis on knowing your numbers. So mm-hmm. budgeting, estimating, job costing. And we're just trying to take all of the, the lessons we learned over the years with what it takes to be profitable and efficient and share that with the rest of the industry in a kind of nice, neat, done for you, uh, software system. Mm-hmm. No, that's awesome. Um, now kind of want to kind of really dive into estimating and what's involved in it and some of the things that goes into it, um, in our landscape business group, Facebook group, the biggest question is, you know, how much should I be charging for this? How much should yeah. I be charging for that? And it's a really tough question to answer for somebody. And, you know, we'll see on there or people reply, well, you need to know your numbers. So you might explain what are some of those numbers that need to go into your estimates and to consider to actually create the estimate. Yeah. And, and to your point, you know, um, to answer that question of, Hey, what should I charge for this? You know, that common question that the industry's Facebook groups, uh, are, are, I'm not going to say plagued with, but yeah, there's just many of them. Yes. Uh, because we all are trying to learn, like, let's say that we go back 15 years. We, that could have been us asking that question. Right. Absolutely. So, so I don't want to, I don't want to bash on that, but at the same time, it's not, a, it's not a, it's not a simple boilerplate question. It's not a simple boilerplate answer. It's why nobody, that's my, that's why nobody can just like answer that question for you. They can share with you what they're charging, but don't use that because that is based on someone else's numbers. <laughs> and basically to answer that question of like, Hey, what do you want to charge or what should I be charging? Uh, you just, you have to fill in some numbers about your company. We can't just shoot a dart in the dark and come up with that answer to your question. Like before we can answer that question for you, we have to know, what do you want to make? What are your overhead expenses? How many, uh, how many billable hours do you have in a year to recover on your overhead? All of those questions have to be answered before we can arrive at the answer. Okay, you should charge X mm-hmm. for the service that you're asking for. And we actually built a couple little nifty little tools on our website. Like I built a, uh, a uh, man hour price calculator because that was a common question. So it's basically like it's, it's about as simplified as you can make it to, so that somebody can get a 30 second answer to their question. Like, hey, what should I be charging per hour? But it's like you can just plug in your sales, plug in your overhead expenses, how many billable hours you have in a year, and it'll tell you. Well, then you should charge X per hour, and that's a that's a very it's a very it's a, like like I said, you're thirty seconds in, thirty seconds out. You get in, yep. what you get out, what you get in. So what you put in, I mean. So um, there's a lot of ways to split hairs further and further down through that conversation, which is really you get to the point of building an actual company budget where you're mm-hmm. entering all your equipment and all your guys and everything. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like the next step. And that's where, that's actually what we teach inside of our academy is, is building your budget and then kind of going from there and just building the budget. You can do so much with it and there's so much in there. You can actually see if you're going to be making money this year and then you can start making adjustments off of that. That's why that's one of the first things we actually start doing inside the academy. Yeah. And that's the very first thing we do when people sign up for Synced Up, like it was, we help them build the company budget. So Mm -hmm. for a lot of people, this looks like this like big daunting task. It's overwhelming. They're not sure kind of how, like, and and I get it. Like Mm -hmm. if you just look at the, a a budgeting spreadsheet for the very first time, it's like, oh my goodness, I have no idea what's going on. But once you sit down, spend an hour and see how those numbers are actually playing off one another. And then you kind of get the concept of it. It's like, oh yeah, it's simple. It's a very, it's basically What's my revenue? What are my direct expenses? What are my indirect expenses? And then how much do I need to mark up my direct expenses to cover for my indirect expenses? And then I arrive at my man hour price or my Mm -hmm. markup on my materials, et cetera. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's just even like us doing coaching calls and stuff. And I'm sure you're seeing it with all the talks you've been giving is people still just don't, some people don't understand even the gross profit margin and versus net right. profit margin and stuff. So we kind of go into all that and that's all part of the budgeting process is, is yep. going through all that. And, you know, it's more than just putting down what your overhead's going to be. It's some people don't have any history on even just like what they did for sales or total man hours. We see a lot of people don't understand that. Or so we have to go in and explain all that stuff. And it's, and there's perfectly normal. If you're start just getting started, you know, getting into this industry, you have no idea. I understand that, but it's important yeah. to kind of go through and, and spend some time looking at those numbers and figure out, or if you're just getting started, figure out what you need to do and bill out for this year. So, yeah, I, I tell people like, just, okay. The best case scenario is you have a, a good profit and loss statement and mm -hmm. that is your source of truth. And, and then you'd look back at your profit and loss and come up with, okay, last year I spent 50 grand on X this year. I think I'm going to spend about 60 and you, mm -hmm. you know, so that's your best source. If you don't have that, um, Second best is like, go check to see what you spent with all your vendors last year. Usually they have records of that. And if you still don't even have that, then we get into what I call having an informed discussion and coming out with a best educated guess on what you're, you know, let's say you're just starting brand new. Like you literally just did a couple of jobs for your neighbors last, last year. Now you're starting full time this year. Then, then I start being like, well, Hey, okay. What do you think your average job size is? 50 grand, 15 grand. You think you can produce, you have two or three guys that are helping you. You can produce what, 20 of them a year in this summer. Okay, great. You know, you just start like putting the pieces together to come up with some best, best educated, educated guesses on projections. Yeah. You're, you're, you're guesstimating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but you got to yeah. use some good judgment and use some, like if there's any industry standards, you can kind of go off just to kind of get mm -hmm. you some basis to get that started. But yeah, and speaking from industry standards, I often, people ask me like, well, what is close? And I said, well, Close industry standards is like usually on a standard company budget is 30% of your cost is labor, 30% of your cost is materials, 30% of it is overhead, and the rest is profit, the 10% or 15%, you know, so give or take five or 10 points off of each one of those, like it can vary, but the 30, 30, 30 rule and 10% profit is a common baseline to kind of, to kind of go off of. So if you're going to sell a million dollars worth of work, 30% of that would be labor, 30% of that would be materials, 30% of it would be overhead. I mean, if your overhead's 40, 50%, then you probably have way too much overhead for the size of company you are. Yeah. And that's where, like, just from my experience and seeing is when you make that budget, like you said, you can kind of go through and, okay, if you're making, you're, you're showing a negative net profit. Okay. Where can we cut? What do we need to do? Is it either in our overhead or are we yeah. lowering our labor costs or, you know, can you get yeah. material from a different supplier? It, it starts asking, helping you figure out these questions before you get it going along and, at the end of the year, you don't have any money. So it's, yeah. it's important. I tell people like, if you build your budget and you come out with a net profit negative, you got two levers you can pull either increase those sales or decrease an expense somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, there's, there's, that's the only two things you can do. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. one of the things I tell people are like, Oh, I can't increase my sales. Well, because I can't do any more work. Okay. You don't have to do any more work, but you may have to just increase your prices. So you yeah. can increase those sales, the, the yeah. revenue. That's right. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes when you increase your sales, that means you're not increasing your net profit margin. So you're just doing more work to increase those sales. Mm -hmm. In other cases, like you just said, you're, 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 you're not doing more work. You're just increasing your markups to produce mm -hmm. more sales at the, at the same amount of work. Yeah. And that's like, honestly, that's probably one of the biggest things we end up telling people. And after going through, you know, we hammer down all their overhead and okay, you can't lower this. Okay. Yeah, it is what it is. Right. Yeah. You can't go any lower on, you know, paying your, your guys. It's only you and one other person or whatever it is. Okay. Well then this, you have no other choice to, but to raise your prices if you want to see save it. To, the point you're making there is actually what, what is kind of reassuring about building a budget to me is because it, there's no emotion in it. It's not like, oh, I can't charge Mr. Jones a, a, you know, X number. It's it, like there's, there's when you build a budget, it's just giving you the cold, hard truth. Mm -hmm. And there's no emotion in it. It's not about do you want to rip off your customer? No, you're not ripping off your customer. You're simply operating as a business. Yep. And, and it can often go through this transformative kind of mindset thing where maybe you feel guilty about charging $50,000 for a job. Because you you think about how much fifty thousand dollars is to you personally and and your value on a dollar, and what we need to remember when we're selling jobs is like my value of a dollar is there is probably not the value. I 
it's probably not the same value that they that my customer feels about a dollar right yep, yep. uh it's just it's just the way it is and so we have to get past that guilt trip that i think we all kind of deal with starting out and just be like the customer is asking me to build this beautiful outdoor living space. That's what they're asking me for. That's the design they fell in love with. The costs associated with it are just the cold, hard facts. It is what it is. And if if the budget isn't a problem at that point, then we need to negotiate on scope of work, not on price. We yeah. need to make the patio smaller or cut out the lighting or uh, che- use a, a cheaper product, whatever. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's all, all goes into the thinking of all this budget and stuff. It's just, it's, it's so important. I can't stress it enough. So that's like yeah. the same as you. We teach it first. Yeah. That's what I love about building a budget. Yeah. I can't say, I can't believe I'm saying it. Love about it. Nobody, <laughs> loves, nobody loves building a budget, but it, it's like, it just gives you, it, it helps you arrive at the truth mm-hmm. and it can help offload so much of that mental mindset thing that we struggle with when we're trying to sell big dollar jobs to customers. So now, you know, we, we've gone through, we created our budget. What other factors need to be considered when we, uh, start putting together an estimate, what, what, what well, other numbers do you look at? Yeah. One, once you've built your budget, um, that gives you basically the truth in how, what your markups need to be. And when I, and the, the two markups are, one is the overhead recovery markup to, to arrive at your break even. So you not only cover your direct costs of your materials and labor and everything for the job, but also for the trucks and the office admin and the insurance and everything you need to be in business. Um, so the, the, the budget gives you two markups, overhead recovery markup and profit markup or margin, whichever one you're using. But once you arrive at that, over, once, you're, once you have your budget and now you're taking your $10 item that you're buying to do that job and mar- marking it up by your overhead recovery markup to get, arrive at your break even dollar number, then you mark that up by your profit margin to arrive at your customer's price. That's, that's what the budget gets you. Mm-hmm. But then what the budget doesn't get you is you still have to estimate the correct quantity of labor the correct quantity of materials and to answer your question about what other numbers to to pay attention to i and this is also difficult to do if you've just started in business and you have no history but i like to uh track everything to the t so that i can build production rates so i can speed up my next estimate faster and faster and faster because what a basically what a production rate does for you instead of you being like and this is what most of us do in the industry is like how long is this going to take Bing, we pull a number out of our head, yep. you know, just from, from experience and people can be, people can become incredibly accurate at that. But the problem is it's only you that can do that. Assuming mm-hmm. you're the owner operator of your business, what happens when you want to continue to grow in your family or your life or your other goals that you may have outside of work or whatever, or you break a leg, like how, who's going to, if it's all in you and your head, the business can never grow beyond you and you are its own self-limiting ceiling. Yep. So, um, what I talk about a lot is like, it doesn't take a lot of work is just take the little bit of extra effort it takes to, um, look at your past history and build a production rate out of that. So that what's in your head is now into a system and process. And literally your office secretary or your foreman could come up with a, with a, an estimate for you. And it's going to be as accurate as the one you would have made. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> One of the things that it's important to do to understand your numbers, don't go off necessarily somebody else because they may, yes. the other company may be more experienced in whatever and doing yes. hardscapes than what you are. So it's learning what your teams are capable of and learning your numbers. Like I, I remember actually I would go out with, I mean, this is before cell phones had stop, uh, timers and stuff. I had a stopwatch and I timed how long it took them to plant a gallon mm-hmm. plant, how long it took to plant a, t- a three gallon plant. And it may seem silly, but that's the way I learned my numbers and, and I was able to estimate. Then I could just, okay, I've got five of this one gallon plant, multiply it out by right. hour of time. I could produce an estimate really quickly. Yep. Yep. So it's- and and uh, people often ask me like when, when I'm showing off synced up and I show them how the production rates and the templates and everything work, they're like, oh, hey, cool. Can, like, can you give me those templates and, and production rates? I'm like, yeah, I can, but I'm just going to tell you, I don't want to because- these are my production rates mm-hmm. based on my crew's experience and the equipment we own. You have a different crew with different experience and different equipment. Everybody's, there is no such thing as a one size fits all template or production mm-hmm. rate. So the best answer, what I tell them is like, I'll help you. I have a spreadsheet. I'll teach you how to build your own production rate. In fact, I can maybe give that to you as a resource for this podcast. It's a production sure. rate spreadsheet okay. where basically all you do is let's say it's for hardscapes, like for patios. 
you, you let's say you have a history of eight jobs in your past couple months and you plug in the square footage of each of those jobs and how many man hours it took you for each of those patios and it'll average out each one to give you an average production rate based on your past history that's the best way to yeah. get a production rate and like what the way you're doing that with your stopwatch you can absolutely do that but as you know that's a lot of work and it, it takes it takes a lot of discipline so what i what i often shout out there as an option just to kind of simplify it but still get a good uh, is a good perspective is like okay let's say you did a landscaping job where you planted 150 perennials and 35 shrubs what i would do is um take those say it took me 40 man hours to plant those 135 plants i would take my 40 man hours divided by 135 and come up with oh it takes me 20 minutes per plant or whatever mm -hmm. it is yeah. so instead of um because like timing each one of those hundred that that that's you can do that but it yeah. and that's actually the best that's the most yeah. accurate but it's also very time consuming uh, yes. and same same way with patios instead of me timing how long it takes to excavate how long it takes to install base how long it takes me to lay how long it takes me to cut how long it takes me to do joint sand and edge restraint and clean up instead of me timing each one of those individual tasks I, I'm a big fan of KISS, keep it simple, stupid. And I like to take like, okay, it was a 500 square foot patio. It took me 120 man hours, divide that, and I can produce X square feet per man hour from breaking ground to clean up. Mm -hmm. So that that gets you really as accurate as you need to accurately estimate. Um, that additional information of how long did it take to do the base versus excavate, that's all information that's interesting and can be useful. But at the end of the day, it's just like, how long does it take me to get the job done so I can collect the check? And that's that's really the number I need. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I do like that idea. And that's, that's actually the easiest way to do it. So yeah, if you're not doing that now, it's go look at your jobs. And well, this, this can lead into another thing about job yes. costing. We'll get into that later yeah. on, but it, it is so important to do. But um, so now you understand your production rates, you have your, you know, under your overhead and your percentages and stuff. What is there anything else that you see that needs to be involved in the estimating process? or put into your estimates? Well, the production, the only other thing I would put in there is um, your production rates get you to your average. Mm -hmm. So the, the other thing I would always, I always take my production rates with a grain of salt because let's say I'm doing a job for Mrs. Jones. It's a patio in a suburban backyard and I'll look at my production rate and be like, yeah, but we got a really tight gate here. We're not gonna be able to get the excavator back here. All we can get back there's the dingo or the MT mm -hmm. or something. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and take my production rate and I'm gonna increase it by 20% just because I know, or, or if you really want to be good at it, you could build production rates for easy access and difficult access and then have an individual production rate for each, for both. Yeah. But, um, that's the, the, so basically once I have my percentages, I use my production rates to come up with like my quantities of labor and material and everything. Then it's like, do I need to fudge anything mm -hmm. from my default production rate for specific job site conditions here? Yeah. Or if I just think this client's going to be, I, I, I don't know what, but I just know it's going to be a difficult job. It's going to be a difficult relationship. I'm just going to bake that in here so that I don't get in. Because the last thing you want to do is get into a position where you do have a difficult client. And because of the way you bid it, you don't have the resources or the budget available to go the extra mile and help the person out. Right. Yeah. Yep. So many times it's so it's it's worth putting that extra 5% or a grand or whatever on the job just so that when that little thing comes up, you can just go the extra na extra mile and just blow that customer away. When you pull off, hand them that gift basket that costs you 50 bucks, but it means so much, you know? Yep. So if you, if, you, if you give yourself the budget to do those kinds of things, it really helps you be an amazing, a company that's looked at as an amazing company to do business with. And all it takes is just putting a little bit extra onto that price so you have the revenue to do that. If you're trying to be the one competing on price and you're shaved down to the pennies, you legit can't there's, mm -hmm. there's, without spending it out of your own pocket. Yeah. And, and that's that's where you get into that conflict of, I want to make this customer happy, but I don't have the money to do what she's asking me to do. Yeah, uh, actually, referring back to uh, Charles Vanderkoy, I think he calls it uh, the fudge factor. I think. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's what we call it too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's it's true. You need you need to consider all that. Yeah. Um, what are some common mistakes you see landscapers make with estimating or putting together an estimate? Well. I, probably the most common one is, is pricing a patio or a walkway or hardscape by square foot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I view that as a mistake because it's, it's, it's too rigid. It does not account for the, the, the unique site conditions that we were just talking mm -hmm. about. Um, in, in the way that I said, you look, you take your production rate with a grain of salt and then you adjust for that specific job if needed. 
you know, a, a, a square foot price is even worse mm-hmm. because like a square foot price is assuming that your paper cost is always the same. It's assuming that your your subgrade is always the same. So you're always going to be taking the same subgrade like base uh, applications. It's assuming that um, that there's no difference between the cut design, the rounded edges and cut artistic cut designs as opposed to just straight lines. Like there's so many variables that can dramatically affect how long it takes you to do the job that a square foot price legit can't accommodate for. And so what's going to happen is you're going to, when you use a square foot price, some jobs you're going to be making more than you need. And some jobs you're going to be making way less than you need. And you're probably going to win more of the jobs that you're making way less than you need because you're going to be the cheaper, you know, the cheaper per bid. Uh, and you're going to win less of the ones that you need, you're making more than you need. So it, it, in my opinion, square foot pricing can get you into trouble pretty quick. Now, I know there's people that have been doing it all their life that way. And yeah, you can do it. Yeah. But it's just, it's a little bit like, I don't know what's a good analogy. It's kind of it's kind of like. It's, it's kind of like taking every job you ever do and averaging it all out completely and not accounting for any specific job. And, and it all for a smaller company, one bad job can can really ca- cause a lot of heartache and, and grief and, and like because you, you lose money on it. It's like, yeah. So with square foot, the, what I like, OK, so instead of square foot pricing, what I like to do is the production rates, which we just talked about. And the reason I like the production rates is because now instead of using square foot pricing for the from the breaking ground to cleaning up. I'm a production rate is looking at, I have a production rate for labor. I have a production rate for my base stone. I have a production rate for my setting bed. And each one of those can adjust accordingly. So if my, if I'm going to need to do, it's a driveway and I'm going to need to do 10 inches of base instead of six inches of base, I can just adjust my production rate for just that stone, but my setting bed's not changing. Yep. So, so, so a production rate is way more flexible. You can pull those different levers and dial it in for that specific job's needs. Whereas square foot pricing you can't and sure you can maybe raise your square foot price by 50 cents and say that you're doing it but that's still kind of um it's not it's the the, the way the numbers aren't work are working in there is not very intelligent or very dialed in well I mean, it goes back to like kind of what you talked about earlier is if you're doing a sidewalk up front it's easy access but then around the back like you said you can't get through the gate and you got to carry all these bricks by hand or, or whatever and wheelbarrow all the stone in that makes that variation a lot different, you know, with your pricing yes. per square foot, if you, rather than if you did it with production hours. So it's right. It, and so in that situation, I would just increase my production rate for just my labor alone, yep. but nothing else is changing. Yep. You know, my stone, my pavers, everything else is the same. It's just my labor that I'm moving at that rate, which mm-hmm. with square with square foot pricing, it's just you just you just can't do it very easily. Yeah. And the other thing with production hours, you, pretty much those those things stay the same for the most part for decades, you know, you might have, you know, do some other equipment or something gets brought in to help. Yeah. Increase it. I, I like to look at them every year. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Just because like your crew becomes more experienced. Mm-hmm. Maybe you upgrade and get a new machine. Yep. Like all those things can have impacts on that. Yeah. But you're, you're planting the, uh, a plant the same way as you did 20 years ago. Yeah. You know? yeah exactly. <laughs> so so yeah. they'll stay the same. So it's just easy just to make the adjustment as far as time is if you got to carry it somewhere else or whatever it is. So yeah, it's, it's production hours is the way to go. I can't, is there any other mistakes you're seeing landscapers make? Um, well, the, the, the one, yes, but it, we kind of already had talked about it with budgeting, but a common mis- mistake I see out there in the industry is people just take their t- cost of materials times three or, yeah. Yeah. Or they just take their cost of materials and labor and just say, oh, I just want to make 20% mo- profit markup or 50% gross margin. And they just take their cost times their profit. And that's what they use to come up with a price for the proposal. And they're not actually calculating in their overhead recovery. Mm-hmm. Like they're skip instead of cost plus overhead recovery plus profit, it's they skip overhead recovery. It's just cost plus profit. Mm-hmm. And and um, people tell me, I oh, just shoot for a 50% gross margin. Uh, and they're ignoring the overhead component. Like they just take their cost times 50% and, and that's how they come up with a price. And that can work for some businesses depending on the size of your business, but it doesn't work. And here's why it doesn't work well. And here's why it's because if you take two different, let's say we take two different businesses, one's a larger company with a good bit of machines and overhead skilled employees. Another one's a smaller company with say three, four guys, a couple of trucks and a lot of manual work still being happening. Both of those companies could make a 50% gross margin, and this one might be making a 5 to 10% net margin, and this one might be making a 25% net margin. 
So yeah. for that reason, I don't like to pay. I don't like to use the gross profit margin as my barometer of the, yeah. how good I did on the job. Yeah. To me, the number that matters it's net because yeah. net is after all my expenses are paid for, including my owner's salary, all my trucks insurance, all my overhead expenses, and that's what really matters. The money that's left in the bank after every bill is paid for, including your own, including your own salary as an owner. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I guess kind of going back to, we'll step back just a quick second for budgeting. I, I wanted to mention this earlier and I forgot it, but what goes into a budget just real quick, just kind of what are some items? I know we'd mentioned the owner's salary and stuff. Um, is there anything else that you feel that needs to be in there? I mean, advertising, marketing, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, literally any, any dollar that ever leaves your business bank account for any reason has to be in that budget. Like it, it, people, it, people, I'll, I'll ask people like, Hey, what's your overhead? And it's like, Oh, this, this, and this equals X. What about, okay. So do you buy any uniforms or t-shirts for you guys? Oh yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Two grand for that. Yeah. Hmm. So like there's dozens of those things so that, which is why I like to use a profit and loss statement because a profit and loss statement is a source of truth. Mm -hmm. um, to, to, uh, but basically the numbers you need to build a budget is plug in your sales, plug in your labor expenses, Plug in your material expenses, like your direct material, like mm -hmm. pavers and stone and that kind of thing. Plug in your equipment that you own, and then you can choose whether you want to recover that in overhead or come up with an hourly or daily rate for that equipment. Plug in all your any money you would spend on subcontractors. Plug in all of your overhead expenses. And then that once you have those numbers dialed in, it's those six numbers, then you have all the information you need to run the calculations for a budget. And mm -hmm. that free budgeting tool that I told you about um, – for instance, when you, it has all this kind of laid out for you. For instance, when you when you click on the overhead cell, you can it pops open a calculator with like all kinds of suggestions. We just kind of took a, a typical P and L and we just laid it out like advertising, insurance, uh, owners' pay, office staff, marketing staff. Like we just put all those in there that what you would see on a typical P and L, and it's very helpful to use because like sometimes when you're going down through that list, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you know what? I bet I did. Um, I bet I did uh, spend some money on that and I forgot about it. So you, you remember those things. And then I even tell people on the overhead line, like that's where you would put in budge factor. So this is what your, this is your overhead stat budget from last um, uh, year. But let's say that you want to budget in for the unknowns, or maybe you want to put in a bonus for the guys, or maybe you want to pay your guys a, a, a salary through the winter months. Like put that right in your overhead, right in mm -hmm. your budget. And then that way, when you sell a job, the markups are built already to produce the funds for those costs. Yep. So um, I like to put in the numbers uh, for the business that I want to be, not necessarily the business I was or am today. Mm -hmm. So if I want to buy that new piece of machinery, if I want to hire that office admin to take some stress off my back, um, I just put that right in the budget, even though I may not hire that right now, or I may not buy that machine right now, but I'm budgeting to, to become the company that I want to be. So that my markups for the job I sell today are producing the funds that would allow me to make those investments. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's so important, to, like I said, just to go back to doing using the budget. And this is where they actually synced up is, is awesome at because it helps you do all this stuff and just calculates it out immediately. Yeah, it's very quick. Yeah. Yeah. So do you mind talking just a little bit about synced up and how it, you know, how it can yeah. help and speed things up? Well, all this stuff that we're talking about, I mean, in, in the past, people have uh, used like a spreadsheets or LMN or some for other software product where it helps you build a budget and build estimating um, or build and then use your budget in your estimating automatically. Uh, and LMN has done a great job in the budgeting and estimating. They've done a lot of good for the industry. Um, and But to me, the, the this whole subject of knowing your numbers Budgeting and estimating is just the first half. The last half of me knowing my numbers is then job costing. So I can build accurate production rates. So I can know when I make mistakes and if I'm consistently underestimating on labor or materials or or even overestimating. Mm -hmm. That can that can also happen. But um, basically what synced up is is taking all this stuff that you could do in a spreadsheet manually that takes a lot of time and discipline and just make it so much easier because it just automates all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you can build your budget, which automatically turns into a drag and drop estimate builder where you're not even running a calculator to come up with a price. It's already doing it all for you. Um, and then when you clock in and out, you record the materials you use on the job as you go. And then that funnels right into your auto, your automated job cost and report on every single job, which, so instead of me sitting down after dinner for two hours at night, updating my spreadsheet with all my receipts and stuff for a job, 
Um, I literally just open up my my app or my screen and be like, ah, that's how we're tracking along. So we're gonna be finished here in two days, and yeah, I expect we're gonna actually come in a little ahead or whatever. Like <laughs> it just it's right there in front of you, and with that information so readily available, it really makes it actually attainable to use those numbers to to come. It's your feedback loop to come back and make sure that your production rates are accurate and that your estimates are actually accurate. Yeah. Half the battle with job costing, like job costing itself is not hard. You can job cost in a spreadsheet in five minutes. Once you have the data to job cost with, the hard part is collecting the data to job cost with. And that's what synced up makes so easy and automates that whole job costing process. Yeah, that's one thing I, I love about the software. It just pulls what you have in the estimate, puts it in, and the guys can just kind of go line by line. Okay, I did this, this, this is all in there. And it spits out the number automatically, which is amazing. And just saves yeah. you as the owner tons of time and tons of headaches. <laughs> plus, yeah, plus it, it decentralizes it. So it pulls yeah. the, the knowledge and the experience you have in your head out, puts mm -hmm. it into a system that you can literally tell your, your foreman that's been working with you for a year or two, hey, when Mrs. Jones asks you for a change order, yeah, just plug in your square footage of the papers you're going to be adding. You know how long it's going to take you, probably another 30 man hours or whatever. And not every single thing has to flow through you. You're no longer the bottleneck of the, yeah. of the company. And once you once you crack that nut, then your company can really grow. Absolutely. I know you're busy, man. Weston, yeah. you time to talk a little bit about job costing or you got to head out? I know. Uh, I got to head out here. I have yep. a call here in four minutes. But yep. uh, yeah, no, this is, we'll, we'll definitely finish up this conversation around the job costing aspect and how we use job costing to make yep. sure that our estimates are being dialed in correctly. Absolutely. Well, Weston, I, I'll let you go. I appreciate you taking the time to hop in with us today. I know you're, I, he's running all over the place, guys. It's, he's, <laughs> he's a busy man. So no, I take. I really appreciate you taking the time today. You're welcome. And, and we'll set something up and we'll, we'll continue this conversation. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Hey, thanks, Scott. Yep. Thanks, Weston. Good Have a great guys. one. Yeah. Bye-bye.